Hey, I'm Matt, and happy Tuesday. And I'm Tim, and today we've got an amazing preview for our 10 at 10. Hey, we've got the 10 at 10 on 022222, so get excited. <laughs> Brian bet me I couldn't get that right. So we've got some amazing plants here today to talk about. So first up here on our 10 at 10 for 022222, we have Macaulay Atsubusa. So Macaulay Atsubusa is a classic Japanese maple. If you follow Mr. Maple or you follow our YouTube channel, you're probably no stranger to this one. It's one of our favorite plants. Uh, it's often nurserymen and experienced people about Japanese maple's favorite plant. Me and Tim always like to ask when we meet older nurserymen and women or even just some of the authors, what's your favorite Japanese maple? And probably the most reoccurring answer would be Makawi Atsubusa. Yeah, it's a classic little dwarf Japanese maple. Looks almost animal-like, almost like shingles on a roof with that green leaves. If you don't have one of these in a garden, you need it. It's a classic, and it does great in containers or great in small spaces. Yeah, it's a very heat-tolerant maple. You can definitely check out our full video on Makawi Atsubusa. I think we've done two. So the second one has better audio. We keep trying to upgrade our audio, but an excellent tree. There's a beautiful specimen of this in our Hillstone Arboretum, too. So if you ever get a chance to tour that garden, you're going to want to see that. It's about the third biggest one I've ever seen, so it's a really cool plant. Second biggest one I've ever seen in person. So amazing small dwarf. We can't say enough things about Makali Atsubusa. Always one we want to keep on the website, so we're excited to get that one back in the mix. And again, these are the sizes we have currently at 02, 22, 22. <laughs> if you're looking at this later in the year, they could be smaller or they could be larger, but this is what we're currently offering. Yeah, so some great sizes on these two. Again, this is the uh, the first one up on today's 10 at 10, the Makali Atsubusa. Next up, we have Pinus Sylvestris Mosera. Yeah, we often joke and call this one the yellow penguin. We don't really change any names of plants here at our nursery, but you know we offer green penguin a lot, and this is the perfect accompaniment to that. Uh, great small shape to it, but golden yellow, especially in those winter months. Yeah, so it, it's a great because it pairs so well because you've got that green, it looks just like the green penguin, and then like Matt said, as those winter months approaches, it gets to that golden color, giving a contrast against if you had a green penguin planted out there. It, Check out our video. We did a whole video just on Mosera. It's one of our favorite dwarf conifers. And I think that's one that can grow great in containers, great for little fairy gardens. Mm -hmm. And if you want a yellow Christmas tree around Christmas, right. you can put some lights around it as well. It's one we've talked about a lot, but it's one that's normally one of our most popular conifers here at the nursery as well. So next up on the table, we have a full moon maple for you. We have Autumn Moon. Yeah, this is a classic. A little known fact, this is actually an introduction by J.D. Vertries, the guy who wrote the book on Japanese maples. He has a few introductions, and this is one of his more popular selections, but yet people don't give him credit for this introduction at Maplewood Nurseries. Yeah, awesome sizes on these. It's a little slower grower, so it's going to get some beefy one gallons here. Um, I love this plant for the color changes. Uh, you know, you get some great flushes of new growth that really accentuate this plant, and some excellent orange to reds in the fall as well. People love the full moon maples. Autumn moon, you're going to need to make sure you give it some protection from the hot afternoon sun. Uh, I often say sometimes autumn moon and arium is best to put them in a pot, find where they're really happy in your yard, and then you can plant them. And uh, make sure you've got good drainage. And these are plants that really give some dynamic colors with the autumn moon. It, it, this is one that's really just going to give you a lot of really unusual flushes that really stand out, especially on that full moon leaf. One of my favorite things about this one is if you can give it, you know, when the container, like he was saying, so you can have a little bit more diverse changes to it, if you can give it some early morning sun, especially in that early spring, you can really get some crazy, almost like orange shades on this one too, that are quite nice. So next up, we have Acer Palmatum Benikawa. This is one we recently did a video on, on Winter Interest Part 2. And mm. this is a classic coral bark Japanese maple, a little bit shorter than Sangukaku, but still gives you some bright red coral bark. Yeah, we typically list this one as the medium size winter interest coral bark. It's an excellent plant. Uh, it's one my dad was growing for a long time, so it's one we've actually probably done the most of, of several of the coral bark, coral bark types. Uh, Benny meaning red, and then Kawa meaning bark, describes it very well for what this one does. And it's a great grower for us. We've had good sun tolerance on this one as well for the south. And while this one can handle good sun tolerance, it's, we really like it because it's a coral bark selection that can often give you red coral bark in more shaded locations. Mm -hmm. And in our uh, shaded cold frames, we actually get great coral bark on it, where some of the Sengukakus and other things, you need to give them a little more sun to peak that color. So next up on our table, we have another spring interest tree. This is Acer Palmatum Benny Mako. Uh, I'd like to pick some of these up to kind of show them a little bit. Again, these sizes are indicative of now, uh, February of 2022. Uh, but an excellent tree, 
Benny Maiko is really, really nice on that spring garden. I mean, it's one that's going to leaf out with some really vibrant pink reds. You know, this one, like the Sojo and Sindu Sojo, is very popular for bonsai. So it's an excellent tree with those small leaves that's going to give you just a flaming on-fire bonsai in the early spring. Goes great in the landscape as well, but always popular for that with that small foliage. Everyone sees the spring color and they think it's in fall color. Yeah. And it has great fall color as well, but that spring color is just so electric that it's one that's really going to be like a flowering shrub in the spring and give you some amazing, amazing color in the spring. It does go green during the summer and it lights up again during the fall with some bright, bright, bright fiery reds again in the fall. And so this is going to be one that's going to give some dynamic color. And when it's, when it's in bloom, when it's in the spring or the fall, it's going to be one of those wow factor plants that just adds so much to the landscape and garden. It's one that almost doesn't look real, especially in that early spring garden. Uh, you know, I mentioned it for bonsai, but it looks great in the landscape. Medium sized plant but it's one that is just a spark of color in that spring garden. I like it for that more pinkish red. I think that's what kind of separates that one from some of the other uh, Shinda Shoujo styles. Yeah, definitely. So next up we have a selection by Talon Buckholtz. This is one called Acer Palmatum Eye Candy. This one's always popular every time we list it. You know, we get some snickers about this one, you know, Eye Candy uh, being a name, and it's spelled I-K-A-N-D-I. So uh, a fun play on words there too with it. Uh, not a Japanese word, but a play on American word there. Eye candy is excellent for that, that reticulated. What you like about Higashiyama and one of the, like the most, I would say, exuberant styles of that. It's a really flashy form. Yeah, it's going to be one that just really gives some really nice pink colors in the spring. And it's so intense pink that it really just adds something extra to the landscape and garden. I find with this style variegation with any of the Higashiyamas, if you can leaf them out slower, you'll get the most intense colors. So often leafing them out in a greenhouse, they're a little more muted. Get these outside in your landscape, let them leaf out naturally, you'll get the most wow factor in that spring garden. You've probably seen our video on fertilizing Japanese maples. We talk about fertilizing in the early spring. This is actually one that we often will wait till it leafs out to fertilize it because if you fertilize it too much in the early spring, you actually get more green color rather than the pink colors. Great plant though. I love that style of variegation. You know, it doesn't ever revert, so you don't have to worry about it being one that's gonna lose its variegation, but certainly leafing out slowly will give it its best colors for you. Now, next up, we brought another ginkgo here in the mix. We have ginkgo by Lobo American, uh, one of our favorite ginkgos. You know, we always joke that sounds like the way some of my redneck friends say America, but it's actually a, a Dutch lady's name. If you've seen the Peve series, by Piet Vergelt. Uh, this would actually, I believe, be his wife's name, but it's definitely someone in his family. American is a dwarf witch's broom. That's a really nice compact shape. I would say one of our more popular dwarf ginkgos we do. Yeah, we love this one just simply because it has that perfectly rounded shape almost every time as it as it develops. Mm -hmm. And we love this plant because it just is a everything you love about a ginkgo, being that it's salt tolerant, pollution tolerant, heat tolerant, uh, amazing school bus yellow fall color, but in a dwarf form. Excellent candidate for a container garden. So if you're looking for a ginkgo for a big pot, this one has a real rounded bubbly appearance to the foliage. Makes an excellent accompaniment in a container garden. So next we've got Thuga Van Huey Smith. And if you've seen our variegated uh, conifer video, this is one that's just super <laughs> electric and is an employee favorite here at Mr. Yeah, Maker. beat our employees to this one. We're going to list them this Tuesday, so be ready for that. It's a fun one. The colors are quite exuberant on this batch. Uh, really, really nice coloration to these. Uh, it's a variegated conifer that's going to catch your eye for sure. It does grow fairly well for us. It's in that 6 to 12 inches of growth, but I typically listed it closer to that 12 inches of growth a year even. Yeah, and this is one that we're, I mean, it's a shocking plant whenever it comes to the bright, bright yellow variegation. Mm -hmm. And this is one that you want to make sure you give good drainage and you want to give it full sunlight. The full sunlight really picks up the uh, variegation and the green foliage and you really get the best growth mm -hmm. out of it when you give it more sunlight. I, I love this plant. I'm planning to put, I'm at, you may have heard me mention it in our variegated conifers video, but I'm planning to put this in a backdrop to some purple uh, reticulated forms of Japanese maple. I haven't quite decided yet what I'm going to put in front of this. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe a wave leaf now, maybe the original purple curls, or something like that. Something that's going to go in front of this, maybe even a celebration. I really hadn't quite made my mind up, but I'm going to put some pink or purple in front of this to really play off that, that color pattern. I think it's going to be the perfect backdrop for that plant. So hybrid Shirasolinums. Yeah, next up we have uh, Purple Umbrella. Uh, probably saw our video on hybrid Shirasolinums. We did a, a really fun hybrids video on that. This one I love, you know, the spring color doesn't even look 
real. I mean, it's almost got a reticulated look to it, especially in shade in the early spring, forming a really, really dark purple. Yeah, a selection by Crispine Silva. Shout out to Crispine. Amazing selection here that is really makes that larger umbrella-like leaf with the purple leaf. And that's where it gets the name of that purple umbrella is that deep red color it can get when you put it in that in the in full sun. And amazing plant. And check out our hybrid Tirasanum video if you hadn't. Uh, we've got a huge assortment of videos. So if you're just checking in for this one ten at ten video, check out all of our other videos too because we've got so many fun things. We try to make some mm -hmm. videos that are fun and exciting for us and hopefully fun and exciting for you too. Brian's been doing such a good job editing. We've been trying to get content out to you almost daily. So I think we've been hitting almost every 9 a.m. right now. So check us out at 9 a.m. for these live premieres. Uh, you can often chat with me, Tim, or Brian in those live premieres. And often all three of us uh, are right there discussing things. And then last up, we have the Nebula here. Yeah, Nebula. You might have seen it in New Ghost Part 1. Yeah. Uh, this is a reticulated variegated type that really gives you some really nice nebula-like colors to the reticulated variegation. We really see the intricacies and the etching in each leaf where the veins are. Yeah, we, we talked about it in that video about nebula, but we were at a science center and the guy was actually looking at a nebula when we were talking about this. And so it really just was kind of cool to see that. And it was like wider in the center and then darker on the outside of the nebula. And it really just gave it some kind of poetic meaning, I thought, to this tree because you could kind of see that in the leaf. Uh, really unique, reticulated, one of the ones we're kind of thrown in that new ghost category, but a showstopper and one of the fan favorites for sure whenever we list it. It always sells out pretty quickly. Yeah, and I really hope you enjoyed this 10 at 10. These are only 10 of the 20 items getting listed on this Tuesday. So there's 10 other items that we're not talking about that you have to check out whenever it lists at 10 a.m. Or if you get that email, you'll get a, a a notification saying here's our 20 plants that are coming out. So it's really the 20 at 10 on 022222 <laughs> <laughs> if you really want to get technical. But we hope you enjoyed this quick look, kind of some size examples of what we have. Again, these sizes are indicative of February of 2022. If you're watching this a year from now, they may be slightly larger or slightly smaller. We hope you enjoy this kind of quick look at these. Definitely like, subscribe, and share. You hear me say it in a lot of our videos, but the best way to support our channel is shopping on MrMaple.com, and we hope you'll do that later today at the 10 at 10, but also sharing our videos. So we greatly appreciate that as well. Take care and God bless. Have a great day.